Kentucky Fried Chicken isn't the go-to fast food chicken restaurant it used to be. The Colonel, Harlan Sanders, who started KFC, has seen what was once one of the best ideas to come out of Kentucky and once a widespread business decline over the years. The story of how Colonel Sanders started KFC, why he hates KFC, and why KFC sued Colonel Sanders is very dramatic, but we will try to determine the main reasons for their popularity decline. Kentucky Fried Chicken is one of the most well-known American brands. For decades, families from all over the country have gathered around the dinner table to share a bucket of the original recipe with mashed potatoes, gravy, and biscuits. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has good memories like that. They used to be the best example of a successful fast food chain. Other chains would consider themselves lucky if they could copy some of KFC's magic. That sounds strange now, because that's not the case anymore. They're not as popular as they used to be, they don't seem as well liked, and their finances have been going downhill. The easiest way to show this might be to look at a number of their US locations, which have been steadily going down for a long time. It's hard to say when KFC was at its best. If you're talking about the highest sales or most locations, it would be around 2004. If you're talking about market share, it would be around the 1970s. If you're talking about quality or customer satisfaction, it might have been when the Colonel was still in charge before 1964. It's one of the biggest stories in fast food, and there's a lot to look at. Today, I will talk about how KFC has changed over the years, focusing on the different owners and the five most significant reasons for their decline. Colonel Sanders was the first owner of Kentucky Fried Chicken. He was a fascinating man who had an exciting life. He learned how to cook when he was six years old because his father died, and his mother had to work all the time to support the family. Harland, as he was known back then, had to cook for his two younger siblings. When he was 12, his new stepfather didn't like him, so he dropped out of school and went to work. In 1929, he opened a gas station in Kentucky and turned a storage room into a place to eat. He served chicken, vegetables, and biscuits. The food was a hit, so the following year when he turned 40, he opened a 142-seat restaurant slash motel nearby. This was the start of the business that became Kentucky Fried Chicken. In the 1950s, he focused almost entirely on expanding the idea by franchising. In 1952, he opened the first franchise in Utah, and four years later, he went on the road full-time to try to convince people all over the country to open their own KFC restaurants. These potential franchisees were drawn to the restaurant's recognizable red and white striped theme, his signature recipe with 11 herbs and spices, and his branding, which included his unique appearance. At this point, he is more well-known than the restaurants themselves. This is a simplified version of how he grew the chain to over 600 locations before selling it all in 1964. That year, a group of investors bought the company for $2 million and promised Colonel Sanders a $40,000 a year salary if he continued to be the face of the company and make public appearances to get people excited about the brand. The new owners were even better at opening new restaurants than the Colonel because, by the end of the decade, there were over 3,400 KFC restaurants just six years after they took over. And that brings me to the first reason for their decline, competition. Just think about the number of 3,400 locations in 1970. That is a crazy number, making them the biggest fast food chain in the country. I know they were twice as big as McDonald's and had a head start in almost every country's market, especially when looking at the chicken restaurants. Like every other fast food chicken restaurant you can think of today, most didn't even exist back then. As time passed and things got more competitive, KFC needed help to keep up. For example, Boston Market had become famous in the 1990s for selling rotisserie chicken, so KFC started selling the same thing in 2013. Chick-fil-A became the best-selling chicken restaurant in the United States, a title that KFC had held for over 50 years. Chick-fil-A took that title even though it had fewer locations in KFC. In 1971, KFC was bought by Hoibline for $285 million. Hoibline was the company that made popular alcoholic drinks like Smirnoff Vodka. Over the next 10 years, they kept finding people to open even more restaurants. Now, it's clear that the previous two owners wanted to grow the brand by opening as many restaurants as possible. One way they did this was by cutting many corners. They found ways to make the food faster, cheaper, and more accessible, but they sacrificed quality in the process. Which brings me to my next point. There were many problems with their menu, and who else on earth knew better than the Colonel himself when the food quality was getting worse? During the 1970s, 
He often complained about the food at their restaurants, saying that many changes had been made to his original recipes. For example, he noted that KFC had the worst fried chicken he had ever seen. On another occasion, he said, My God, that gravy is horrible. They buy tap water for 15 to 20 cents a thousand gallons, mix it with flour and starch, and end up with pure wallpaper paste. When they came out with their extra crispy chicken in 1974, he called it a fried dough ball stuck on some chicken. KFC even tried to sue him for these comments, but they failed. So it's clear that some changes were made to the menu. Another big problem with their menu was that they tried to move away from fried chicken and focus on other things like spare ribs and roast beef. In the late 1960s, they even tried to start a separate chain of restaurants called Kentucky Roast Beef, which had quite a few locations before closing. To finish off the list of owners, in 1982, R.J. Reynolds, the biggest cigarette company in the United States, bought KFC and the rest of Hoibline. They had also bought Del Monte three years earlier and would buy Nabisco three years later. But after only four years, they sold KFC to Pepsi for $850 million. This deal made sense for several reasons, but mainly because Pepsi had already bought Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. KFC used to sell Coke products, but after Pepsi bought them out, they switched to Pepsi products, which ties in with their menu problems. Taco Bell and Pizza Hut were known for creating successful new menu items, so they would do the same for KFC when Pepsi took over. They put millions of dollars into a new complex just for KFC, but it seemed to pay off differently than they had hoped. Instead, they put out a lot of failed products around that time, and by 1990, they were at the end of the list. All the restaurants that Pepsi owned were spun off into a publicly traded company called Tricon, later renamed Yum Brands. Tricon bought and sold other fast food concepts and even tried co-branding many of them under the same building, but KFC remains today. Were you enjoying the KFC story so far? There's still more, but if you like the story, don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. You won't believe what happens next. So, back to my list. A big part of their problems has been their marketing. When Colonel Sanders died in 1980 at the age of 90, they lost their spokesperson. Honestly, I don't know of any brand with someone more closely associated than KFC and Colonel Sanders. I think of them together, and I'm trying to figure out what they're trying to do here. Different campaigns have been less catchy and compelling. In the 1990s, they wanted to bring them back as cartoons, and more recently, celebrities dressed up as him. That one was part of a $185 million investment. In 2015, the company wanted to breathe new life into the brand. The Colonel was first played by comedian Daryl Hammond, who thought he would be the spokesperson for a long time. He was replaced by Norm Macdonald, Jim Gaffigan, Reba McIntyre, and many others. It's a little controversial and could be seen as rude. It might have brought more attention to the brand, but I need to see numbers that show it's been all that effective. In 2009, KFC's grilled chicken was a hit, but they could have marketed it better. They sent a letter to the UN asking them to recognize a country called Grilled Nation, which comprised of 60 million people who ate their new product. They also sent someone dressed as Colonel Sanders to the UN building, who somehow got into restricted areas and shook hands with some important people. There was another marketing fiasco also involving grilled chicken. Oprah Winfrey promoted a deal on her show where people could download a coupon for a free meal. But too many people showed up, so the wait times were too long, and they couldn't honor all the coupons. This was more bad publicity for KFC. Another reason they lost popularity is that they could be healthier, and Kentucky Fried Chicken is considered one of the least healthy restaurants. People have become more health conscious over time, especially compared to when they were the most popular restaurant in the 1970s, and that has yet to be good for business. I mean, the word fried is in their name. In fact, in 1991, they changed their name to KFC so they wouldn't have that unhealthy sounding word in their name. Soon after, they tried to add more healthy foods to the menu, but it could have been done better. In the early 2000s, they ran a campaign that said KFC stood for Kitchen Fresh Chicken. This seemed to be another health-related campaign. In 2006, they were sued for the shocking amount of trans fats on their menu, and later that year, they agreed to stop using trans fats in their cooking oil. In 2010, the Double Down Sandwich had fried chicken instead of a bun, which was made fun of because it was unhealthy. KFC has always had a hard time being seen as at least somewhat healthy, the last reason on my list is a collection of smaller ones, so I'll call it their reputation. At this point, KFC doesn't have a good reputation, and they have a history of bad relationships with their franchisees, and animal rights groups are constantly criticizing them. 
They need to catch up whenever they renovate or update their restaurants. People have said bad things about their customer service, which is especially bad because their biggest competitor, Chick-fil-A, is known for having excellent customer service. When they changed the name to the initials in 1991, it started a massive rumor that they had to do something genetically to the chickens and couldn't legally call the new creature a chicken. This isn't true, but the talk has been going on for about 30 years. So there you go. These are the main reasons why KFC is smaller and more well known than it used to be. However, everything in this video applies to Kentucky Fried Chicken in the United States. They've been much more successful in other countries, especially China, where they were the first US fast food chain to open up in the 1980s with a very different menu. Since then, they've used that head start to become one of China's most well-known US brands. In 1997, the number of KFC locations outside the US surpassed the number of places in the US. Today, over 80% of KFC's locations are outside the US, so it's fair to say that most of KFC's attention has been on foreign markets during this time. If this observation on KFC was interesting, I'm sure you'll like to hear about another famous company. Check out another one of our videos.